That is the most important paper you will ever write. This is, of course, your resume. In this video, I'll be talking about how to write an excellent resume for electrical engineers. The four topics we'll go over are the mentality of a hiring manager and what they see when they look at your resume, tailoring your resume accordingly for each position that you're applying for, body and style, and some awesome resources to help you out. Let's get started. Before applying anywhere, it's important to understand the mentality of a hiring manager, right? What are these people thinking when they see your resume? Well, let's think about what it looks like from their perspective. So let's pretend that you're a director or a senior VP and it's your job to grow your team. And to do that, you need to hire some really good people. Well, in order to hire just one person, you probably are going to interview about three or four of them in person, maybe you'll have about five or 10 different phone calls and you might have sifted through about 50 to 100 resumes. So that might be the filter for some positions. So think about what this hiring manager is trying to do. They're trying to filter out and not waste too much time on candidates that don't look good. So it's true what they say. Within the first five or 10 seconds, they've already made a decision to either put you in the go ahead and call pile or in the discard pile. The reason that they do this, of course, is to save time. They don't have the time to call 100 people or sit down with 10 or 20 different people. It's just not possible. The higher up you get, the less time you have and the more busy you become. You get bogged down in meetings and emails and everything else. So the resume is used as a filter which is why the resume is so important. It is a highlight of whatever it is you've accomplished. It's a highlight of your struggles, if you think about it, really. Everyone here is looking out for themselves. Yes, of course, you're looking to get a job and start your career and, and make money. But you know what the hiring manager is looking for? They would love to help everybody out too, but you know what? It's not a charity. It's a business that they're running. They are looking for somebody who's going to help them in their goal, and that is to provide a better service to their customers to help them design better products. So the, the hiring managers are really looking out for themselves. Everyone is quite selfish in this exchange, but what you need to do and think about is how can you be service minded? How can you help the hiring manager in their role? and in, in this position that you're applying for. The hiring manager ultimately asks, can this person help me accomplish my goals? So keep that in mind. Secondly, make your resume very specific. You can do that by tailoring the resume to the position and the company that you're applying for. Even if you've not had any experience before, you still wanna have an objective that states exactly what you're looking for. For instance, here's one of my old resumes. Seeking a position as a substation engineer in the power industry, which would make use of my five plus years experience as a high voltage protection and controls substation engineer. If I was just starting out and had no experience, I would say seeking a career as a substation engineer in the power industry, which would make use of my interest and focus on power systems from my BSEE. We all know what BSEE stands for, right? Yes, Bachelor of Science, Electrical Engineering, not, B, not BS. Anyway, you get it. So you wanna tailor that. And one of the first things that hiring managers look for, I know in my own experience and the experience of others that I've spoken to, we look at the objective. I wanna make sure that our interests are aligned and that you also know what, you're, what it is that you're applying for. So now that we know what the hiring manager looks for and their process, and we also know to tailor the resume specifically. Let's talk a little bit about the body or what it is you're gonna put in your resume. There's an awesome book that I recommend to anybody just starting out and that is A Guide to Writing as an Engineer by David Beer and David McMurray. So if you're not as geeky as I am and trying to brush up on your engineering writing skills, let me just share a couple, couple awesome tips that they have. Perhaps the most important thing to remember is to keep it as short as possible. You don't need a couple of pages if you're just starting out. Be very specific about your qualifications and background. Don't be vague. Present your education and work experience in reverse chronological order. Be sure to omit the word I. For instance, you don't need to write, I designed the flux capacitor. Okay, you can just say, designed the flux capacitor to accomplish, etc., etc. It just makes it sound a little better. Omit personal details such as your age, your gender, your marital status. That's a little bit inappropriate for the resume and certainly don't have a photograph on there. It might make you stand out, but also that perception that the hiring manager will have 
it, it might be a good one, it might be a bad one. You don't know, everyone has some internal biases. So instead, have them call you and find out who you really are. Be sure to use strong action verbs when talking about your background and details. Verbs such as solved, designed, developed, coordinated, supervised. Those verbs place an aura of confidence in the reader's mind and also they make the writing much more succinct. You look better and you sound better when you use those verbs. At this point you might be saying, well Nenad, that's all well and good, but honestly I have absolutely no experience. I didn't intern anywhere and I'm just starting out. I'm about to graduate. Help me out. What can I do? Okay. So yes, you need to sort of fill out your resume in a different, different way. Include relevant projects that you've worked on. What did you do for senior design, for instance? Or any other things that you've done maybe at home or, or, or just with a group of friends that is relevant. Even if the projects aren't, you know, real engineering, I still want to know what you've done. So put it on there. Spend extra time talking about relevant courses that you've taken. Maybe you took a power systems class and because of this class, that brought on the desire for you to enter the power industry. Talk a little bit about that, talk about what you learned in the class and how you can use to apply that in the position that you are looking to get hired for. Talk about other organized things you've done as well. Maybe it's a uh, team sports. Um, maybe it's, it's some volunteering that you've done. If you haven't volunteered, now would be a good time to, to do something for the community and you can put that on your resume. That's very powerful. Mention any organizations that you're a part of. For electricals, of course, that's IEEE, that's the biggest one. If you're a member of that, note that on there. And if you're not, what are you waiting for? Just sign up, everyone's an IEEE member. Go to some of their events. And finally, change up the formatting. Right, maybe it's an inch on the margins. Well, make that 1.25, or maybe you've written it as single space. Make it, you know, double space or 1.5. That'll make it appear a little bit better and it won't have too much white on the page. Finally, we get to the free resources that are gonna make this process so much easier. So the very first thing is absolutely free, and that is just going onto your Word, if you have a PC, or Pages, if you have a Mac, and opening up the software and searching under templates. So if you just type in resume, you'll see all the different templates. If you wanna supercharge your resume and make this process so much easier, then the next tool that I recommend, it's not free, but it's only $2.99 and it's a website called beamjobs.com. Now, I'm not sponsored or affiliated by them in any way. I just thought it was an awesome tool and I wish I would have had that when I was first starting out. So check out beamjobs.com and you'll see what I mean. Create my resume and then just type in whatever industry that you're looking to get, whatever position. So let's just do electrical engineering and you'll see about four or five different resumes pop up and there's even one that's a power engineer. There's an, there's an entry level one. You can click on any of those. And the really neat feature here is they have an AI assist and it'll help you with the writing. So it'll omit those pronouns that we talked about, such as the I. It'll help you write with the strong verbs that we mentioned, such as solved, developed, created, etc. And it also will make sure that you're writing in the active voice. And the really cool thing is there's a little feature that has a score at the top there and you can see how well your resume uh, flows. So I really, really recommend that. It's $2.99 for two weeks, and I think that it will help you out tremendously. You can probably get your resume done in under an hour if you go through all the steps, and it's gonna look flawless. And of course, afterwards, you can just cancel the service or whatever if you're not using it anymore. Finally, if you wanna take your resume to the absolute top that it could be, well then, I suggest hiring a writer. Now, it's not as expensive as you might think, and the service that I use is called Upwork.com. And on Upwork, you can find freelancers of any kind, but you simply go on Upwork and you type in resume writer. And of course, you can filter it out by people um, in the US only, and also by the hourly rate and all that, and you can select somebody that would only really need about an hour or two to, to make sure that the way you've written your resume really stacks up and that it's written professionally and that it stands out with good grammar and that it's very succinct. So you could either choose to do one of those things or you could go ahead and do all three of those things, but between them, that should be plenty to help you get on your way. Final free resource that you might not have thought about is to simply just go talk to your advisors. Even if you just graduated, for instance, go to campus, find the advisors and ask them if they can take a minute to look at your resume. It shouldn't take them very long. They've seen plenty before and they'll be able to point you in the right direction. I hope you found this video valuable and that it helps you out on your journey to getting hired and to the position that you want. 
please let me know in the comments below what you liked or if there's something that I missed or any other tips, please put them in there to help anybody else that's watching this video. And as always, give me a like and a subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.